Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, Symptoms of Global Warming and Global Cooling are Identical. I'm going to show you in this video how climate alarmists have completely reversed their story about snow as the weather's changed. After the 1998 El Nino 20 years ago, there was a lot of warmth and dry weather. And we saw a lot of headlines like this one from The Independent from the year 2000, which read, Snowfalls are now just a thing of the past. But those warm, dry winters are over, and now we're starting to see some pretty cold, snowy winters. And those headlines have changed from snowfalls are now just a thing of the past to that snow outside is what global warming looks like. The same climate alarmists who are claiming that snow is a thing of the past are now saying the exact opposite. They're saying that snow is caused by global warming. This is a fairly typical story of that genre from Grist. According to actual scientists and not conspiracy addled politicians, climate change could actually make snowstorms worse. Think Progress spoke to Michael Mann, the nation's preeminent climatologist, about winter storm Jonas, which is currently blanketing the eastern seaboard in feet of snow. He said, this is not a fluke. There is peer-reviewed science that now suggests climate change will lead to more of these intense blizzard-producing nor'easters. So 20 years ago, snow was a thing of the past. Well, let's take a look now at what we're getting this year. Picture on the left I took in Washington, D.C. right after New Year's. The night before it gotten down to about 0 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 18 C, and people were ice skating on the reflecting pool. Picture on the right I took in Philadelphia during one of their coldest, snowiest March Aprils on record. And much of the U.S. has seen record or near record early snow this autumn. Now let's go back to that Grist article for a minute and look at that first sentence. According to actual scientists and not conspiracy adult politicians, climate change could actually make snowstorms worse. Well, let's look at who some of those conspiracy theorists are. In the year 2001, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change wrote, milder winter temperatures will decrease heavy snowstorms. And in the 2000 article in The Independent, David Viner of the Climatic Research Unit in England said, children just aren't going to know what snow is. So apparently the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and the Climatic Research Unit of the British government are the conspiracy theorists whom Grist was talking about. In the year 2006, the New York Times announced the endless summer, and they said it goes hand in hand with polar bears dying in the Arctic as the sea ice shrinks. In 2014, the New York Times thought that we'd seen the end of snow. In the year 2012, the Washington Post predicted cherry blossoms blooming in February. On March 8 of last year, the New York Times said, Spring came early. Scientists say climate change is a culprit. Well, I took these pictures in Philadelphia exactly one year to the day later after the New York Times article. We not only didn't have an early spring in Philadelphia, but the winter kept going well into April. It was one of the latest springs on record. So now we know who the conspiracy theorists are who Grist was talking about. It included the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the Climatic Research Unit of England, the New York Times, and the Washington Post. So the weather changed rather dramatically over the last 20 years, and they had to change their story. Now they're blaming all the snow and blizzards on rapid Arctic warming and melting ice. Three blockbuster winter storms have bombarded the Northeast this month. Meanwhile, Arctic sea ice fell to record low winter levels. Temperatures in the dead of winter rocketed to the melting point at the North Pole, nearly 60 degrees above normal. All this wild weather is tied together, part of a trend and linked to climate change, a study published in Journal Nature Communications finds. So global warming used to mean no snow, but now it means lots of snow and it's due to the Arctic melting. Let's have a closer look at that. This is today's Arctic sea ice extent graph from the Danish Meteorological Institute. You see the red dot there shows the current extent. It's in the normal range and just below the 1981 to 2000 mean. Arctic sea ice has been growing very rapidly the last few weeks and is well up in the normal range. It should get pretty close to 1981 to 2000 mean soon. That doesn't really sound like the Arctic is melting down to me. Houston just had their earliest snowfall on record, and they're going to have a pretty tough time blaming that on Arctic sea ice, which is growing at a near record pace. Remember that in 2006, the New York Times announced the endless summer and they tied it to polar bears dying in the Arctic as sea ice shrinks. 
So now we know from climate experts that shrinking Arctic sea ice not only causes an endless summer, but it also causes a record early winter. This story is going to get much more ridiculous than it already is in a minute, but for now let's just have a look at what's happened since that 2006 article to Arctic sea ice. This is the graph of every single day since the year 2006 when that New York Times article was written. As you can see, there's been no change in Arctic sea ice extent over the last 13 years. We get cyclical variations of more ice in the winter and less ice in the summer, but there's been no trend since that New York Times article was written. So every day we get bombarded with stories about Arctic sea ice shrinking, but the fact of the matter is that it hasn't been shrinking for the last 13 years. It shrank from 1979 to about 2007, but since then it's been very steady. The Arctic is not melting. And remember that in 2012, the Washington Post predicted cherry blossoms blooming in winter. Let's see how that prediction is coming along. This graph shows the Washington, D.C. cherry blossom peak bloom date over the last 30 years. You can see that the trend is that they're blooming later and later. In fact, five of the last six years have been very late. With this trend, it seems pretty unlikely that Washington, D.C. is going to be having cherry trees blossoming in winter. The trend is going the other direction. Now let's look at autumn and winter northern hemisphere snow extent from Rutgers University Global Snow Lab. You can see that autumn snow cover has been increasing over the last 50 years, and so has winter snow cover. What this means is that snow is falling further south than it used to due to cold Arctic air intruding closer to the equator. What's causing this increase in northern hemisphere snow extents are large dips in the jet stream which are bringing cold air very far south and snow is coming with it. Climate scientists are of course blaming this on Arctic warming and melting Arctic sea ice. They say, the greatest warming has been happening in the Arctic region, and that can produce a weaker, less stable jet stream that allows frigid air to dive further south to mix with the warmer oceans to trigger more potential snow events. Well, that sounds very sciencey and convincing, until we look at what they were saying 40 years ago. This illustration was in National Geographic in 1977, and it showed the identical jet stream pattern. That was the year when it snowed in Miami. And Arctic sea ice was near a record high that year. So on the left is a global warming polar vortex, and on the right is a global cooling polar vortex. They're essentially identical. I mentioned earlier that it snowed in Miami in January 1977. Well, Alaska was very warm that winter, and it was snowing in South Florida. You notice this ad up here. Free lifetime snow removal with the purchase of every Sun State home in Florida. National Geographic described 1977 as the year the weather went wild. Citrus trees covered with ice. People buried in deep snow in the east. Cars in Buffalo, New York were completely buried in snow that winter. People had to get their shovel out just to find their car. Numbing cold grips the east and scant winter snow and rain in the west. President Ford tried to go skiing at Vail that Christmas and there wasn't any snow deepening drought across the land. These satellite photos on the right show normal snowpack in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California, and on the right it shows snowpack during the winter of 1977. There was almost none. California nearly dried up and they were having terrible fires. In 1977, Governor Jerry Brown warned of drought disaster facing California. Los Angeles, March 7th, Governor Jerry Brown warned here today that drought-stricken California was facing a disaster of immeasurable magnitude. And here we are 40 years later, the same Governor Brown, with a lot less hair, warning of permanent drought. So things seem pretty much the same as the 1970s, except for one big thing. Back then, scientists blamed it on global cooling instead of global warming. Scientists have found other indications of global cooling. For one thing, there has been a noticeable expansion of the Great Belt of dry, high-altitude polar winds, the so-called circumpolar vortex. So in 1974, the polar vortex was caused by global cooling. So let's review this again. This is a current global warming polar vortex. And in 1977, this was a global cooling polar vortex. They're exactly the same. It's almost like droughts are cyclical in California. 
This graph shows droughts in California going back to the year 800. They used to have a lot of really long droughts shown by these red humps. They've been lucky recently. Last century was the wettest on record. And now they say this little blip of a drought is man-made, whereas all of these were natural. Climate is cyclical, but climate scientists have to keep their funding coming in. Between the 70s and now, they switched the story from global cooling to global warming, but now they're in a bit of a pickle. So now they're just trying to blame all the cold, snowy weather on global warming. I don't think that story is going to fly. The New York Times not only says that melting Arctic ice causes endless summer, but they also say it causes very long, cold, snowy winters. I've been calling them out on this nonsense for a long time. And of course they won't talk to me, but they do write hit pieces about me, calling me a climate denialist. We supposedly have a free press in this country, but a lot of newspapers like the New York Times have a policy where they'll refuse to talk to anyone who doesn't toe the official global warming line. They'll attack you, but they won't talk to you, which is basically the same model that was used by the press in the Soviet Union. Climate scientists have been changing their story cyclically with the weather for as long as I can remember. When it gets cold and snowy, they come up with a new story. When the snow goes away, they come up with a new story. When the snow comes back, they come up with a new story. And all the while, they deny that they ever said the things they said in the past. And anyone who goes back and looks at old newspaper articles and old predictions and sees what they said in the past gets called a conspiracy theorist. History is now a conspiracy. Climate science is straight out of George Orwell's Ministry of Truth from his novel 1984. He who controls the past controls the future, and he who controls the present controls the past. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.